Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. We actually have offices. There are actually 20 of us here in Westboro. But this show is not about uh, elder law. It, it is about Frank and Mary. If you've seen my programs before, you know that Frank and Mary, uh, their goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Westboro, that means they start to stay right here. And so the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the, are the issues that you need to know about in order to kind of live happily ever after right here in Westboro? So everybody knows, everybody knows Shelby Marshall, although actually I think every, everybody probably knows both of our guests today. But Shelby, as you know, is my co-host whom I reeled in a couple of years ago because she tends to know everybody. And so she has these great guests. But the, and this show is really part of something you really need to know about. Uh, you know, you know, it's election season, and there are other people running besides Joe Biden and Donald Trump. You know, are going to be on the ballot. You know, and so and so Shelby, uh, is, among others, our state rep. And so we we interviewed our our uh, the current state rep, Danielle Gregoire, a little while ago, and we're now uh, we uh, Shelby's been wonderful enough to interview her friend, the challenger. Who, who, who sits close by her uh, in, in her selectman's meeting. So Shelby, whom do we have today? Yeah, so when you, speaking of reeling, I feel like a little fish in a big pond, but uh, in that little pond called Westboro, I'm fortunate to- Very little uh, pond. <laughs> I'm fortunate to know uh, Dr. Syed Hashmi, uh, we're gonna call him Syed here, because uh, we're pretty casual uh, and that's also his request. Um, but Syed and I um, serve on the Westboro Board of Selectmen. Uh, we were elected at the same time, so we've worked together for now almost three years. And he's taking uh, that next big giant leap into the state foray. He's also been involved in the Mass Municipal Association and other regional organizations. So we're here to talk to him about his run for state representative. So welcome, Syed. So first of all, good morning and thank you for having me and thank you for ac acceding to my unusual request for IT because I'm the technically challenged IT member on the board of uh, uh, selectmen. And I, I think, uh, Mr. Bergeron, you, you, hit it, you hit the nail on the head. You know, one of the things I think people don't realize is that so, so many people are focused on the up ballot, uh, things that people that are up on the ballot, that they don't focus on things that are actually much more important to them lower ballot uh, elections like my like the election that I'm involved in. And this is particularly critical in this time. As we, as you and I and Shelby are speaking, we have lost over 9,300 of our own residents. For the past two months, we've had the, uh, not the past, we've had two of the highest, uh, for two months consecutively, we had some of the highest unemployment rate in the nation. We continue to have a high unemployment rate. And so the, the thing, the issue that I want to make is that, you know, COVID has affected us all. Whether you have lost loved ones without the chance to say goodbye, whether you've lost jobs without, uh, and then access to healthcare, or you've lost access to childcare. And the point that I, the, the reason that I'm running or the point that I want to make is that a COVID didn't just cause misery, it exposed the misery, you know, that was there. And it, it, it exacerbated or highlighted all the problems that we had already faced, but we chose to ignore. And, and so the, the point that I want to make and the reason that I'm, I'm so passionate about this issue is that the only way uh, we're going to heal ourselves is by investing in ourselves, by investing in our towns and by investing in our children and our seniors. And that is, you know, you talk about, you know, those seniors that want to grow old in their homes. That is, what, that is why I am, I'm, I'm running. And so, the, my, you know, while the state government or Beacon Hill, as it is called, may seem far removed from the daily lives of people, how it is or is not run should matter to you. It, it, it shouldn't be the place where concerns of you and I um, go to die. And the point that I want to make is, has the status quo worked for you? Has the status quo afford, uh, ensured that you can live in this state or that you can retire in this state? Has the status quo made healthcare affordable for you? Has the status quo improved your commute when you were, you know, when you were commuting? And the, the other point that I would just briefly make is that, you know, one of the, as Shelby has pointed out, I'm a challenger running against a well-established incumbent. And the point that I want to make is how has that experience translated into a better life for you? You know, well before 
uh, this pandemic, we, we, we couldn't pass a state budget on time, which is one of the most basic essential things of running a government. We didn't fund our towns adequately, and hopefully we'll talk a little bit more about that. And we didn't care, control healthcare costs. So this crisis to me has highlighted that we need, we need a new kind of leadership. We need dynamic new leaders that recognize the urgency of the moment and leaders who can think beyond the, the current status quo. And that is why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running. One last thing, or just two more things, you know, in the towns that compromise our, our district, the three towns, Westboro, Northboro, and Marlboro, I'm the only elected official who happens to be board certified in critical care. I'm also the only elected official who happens to be a member of the Board of Health. As Shelby has pointed out, I'm also a member of the Massachusetts Municipal Association. I serve on its board. So that perspective gives me, you know, kind of in a sense, I've been at the bedside of the patient while they've been going through this crisis. And as a result, that, that passion of seeing things that we could have done or should do drives, uh, drives my, uh, my campaign. And to me, elections are ultimately about vision choices and whether the candidate, i.e. myself or Representative Greg Gregoire, shares what you believe in. And I, I hope as a selectman, I have shown the residents of our town or the residents of our district that I have the vision, effort, and willingness to take uh, risks for things that matter. And I'm willing to be bold and, and, and willing to say that, look, it's not that I, I have solutions for the problems that we have, and I hope we'll discuss some of that. And so I just want to close with, again, saying that, you know, I, I chose to become a surgeon to heal people. I chose to become a selectman to heal my town. And, and now I'm running to be a state rep because I, I strongly, deeply feel that we need to heal our state. And a government of the people and by the people and for the people means, means you, the voters. And I can't do this alone. And I hope you'll join us in healing Massachusetts together. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you very That's much. A lot. Uh, no, no. Well, you started to touch on sort of, so just to remind viewers, we went through the same format with Representative Greg Barr, where we have three questions we're going to ask, hopefully get through them all with you. And then we have a fourth that you provided to us. So the same three were asked of her. You started to touch on question one, but let's dive right into that. And that is, what will be your top three priorities if you're elected? You know, it, it's a funny thing. Before I, um, when I was preparing for, so thank you for sending me the questions, but when I was preparing for this, this discussion, I actually had a list of the three things I wanted to do, okay? And it was fund affordable, you know, fund affordable childcare, it was to expand uh, lower drug and healthcare costs, and then third, fund our towns. Okay, so those were the three things I wanted to talk to you about, okay? And if you want further details on it, you can go to my website, drsayedformass.com. Uh, but then I came across this headline. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Shelby, can you see this headline? If uh, I'm sure. There we go, yep, yep. Can you see it? Yep. Yep, so it, it's an editorial from the Boston Globe. It's from uh, September 27th of this year, I, I think you guys saw it. And it says Beacon Hill should finally pass a campus sexual assault bill. Now, why would this be a priority for me? Well, here's the deal. For five years, so let me just backtrack. Should, I hope all of us, no matter what party affiliation we are, should agree that campus assault is a bad thing, right? It is a thing that we should prevent. For five years, the, this, the editorial talks about, for five years, there's been a bill before the legislature to, to address this issue. And our legislature has not taken it up. And so the point that, the reason I bring this up is that if we as a, um, as a state government do not do the small things well, right? If we cannot pass a simple bill that protects our children in colleges from sexual assault, how are we then going to talk about affordable childcare? How are we gonna talk about, I mean, we need to do the basics right. So yes, all those things that are, you know, my priorities are my priorities and you can look at them online, but ultimately we need to start by doing little things correctly. I mean, one of the other things that go, I, I don't have, I mean, this was just in the editorial more recently. I mean, consider the fact that there's something called meal shaming. Um, and if for those that don't know it, it is when children, um, underprivileged children who cannot afford to pay for their meals in school are, basically uh, called out for not paying their bills. 
Now there was a bill in the legislature to address that. I think it was in 2018. And that also kind of withered away and died. So if we are not willing to protect our children or pass the campus assault bill uh, that protects our children in college, if we are not willing to pass meal shaming for, uh, to prevent bullying of children in school, then what is the good of being elected? I mean, to me, the point of the privilege of elected office is to protect people. In my, in my profession, there's, um, there's a saying, the secret of taking care of the patient is taking care of the patient. To me, the secret of taking care of our residents is taking care of our residents. And if we cannot do basic things, then forget me talking about, so to me, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna focus on getting these little things passed and then focus on getting those things, other things, which are just as important to me, but those are bigger things. But if we can't do small things correctly, we will never do the big things. And these are small things that should have bipartisan support and they should be passed urgently. Okay, great, thank you. Um, another topic that is near and dear to uh, our hearts and our minds is Eversource. So um, just to remind residents that Eversource is proposing a high pressure gas line um, uh, for through the, essentially the center of Westboro's east side of town. Um, past private residences, schools, places of religious worship, um, and senior residences. Um, the project is not um, supposed to support Westboro directly at this time. Um, and um, it's going to, uh, it's going to be, if it goes through, it's, it's a much contested project as, as uh, Syed knows. So, um, so what's your position on it? I know that answer because we've talked about it at length, but please share it. And, and I think in your response, if you would, you know, uh, what do you think that towns like Westboro, because we're not the only ones affected, should be doing to um, uh, respond to these kind of projects? So Shelby, thank you for asking that question. But before I begin, I just need to say a couple of things, uh, uh, disclaimers. The positions that I'm uh, that whatever I'm going to say um, is reflective of uh, me as an individual, does not reflect uh, my position as a member of the Board of Selectmen. It also, I should also add this disclaimer, since I am, uh, was tasked, I uh, was privileged to be tasked to deal with this issue by the Board of Selectmen, everything that I'm about to say reflects uh, comments that I've already publicly made um, and is, um, and so just, just wanted to get that out there. So to answer your question, Shelby, this is a very big deal, and I am publicly against this uh, pipeline. It is going to cause a huge So let's just put this in the backdrop of what happened in Lawrence in 2018, where there was gas explosions. Now we're about to, we're being told that we need this, we're being told we need this gas pipeline through the center of town. The question that, which puts the neighborhoods, including senior populations at risk, we have not to this date been given any, um, firm data as to why this pipeline is needed. More importantly, there's, um, now granted this is COVID and all that other stuff, there's actually been some data showing there's been some decline in gas usage. So first, I don't know if the, we need this pipeline. B, we don't know if it's, um, if it's going to actually help the residents of Westboro. And third, and much more, um, I guess, much more importantly, is that we as a town or we as a state have decided that we believe in, 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 uh, in, in protecting our, our, our future, that we believe that there are, we, we want to fight climate change. So here we are, a lot, if we put this gas infrastructure in, we're, we're not doing any, we're not addressing that. And the other, along with this, along at the same time as all of this is happening, Eversource, the company that is putting in this pipeline, is asking for a rate increase to pay for the infrastructure that it is already put in. And one of the things that, that deeply concerns me is that we, we put this infrastructure in and we are going to be, we as in the residents of the town or, or the state are going to be paying for this infrastructure when we don't even know if we need this infrastructure. And so, uh, so that I hope covers that. But I think the bigger more essential question you ask is a um, is a good is is a great question. Like, what can we as a town or other towns do? And ultimately, I think 
it comes down to two things. One, I, I firmly believe that there should be local preemption, that we as towns should have rights over these things, uh, over these projects, especially when uh, they, uh, they affect our residents. And the second, and we, uh, again, we briefly discussed this at the, uh, the representatives came to, and Shelby, correct me if I'm wrong, the representatives came to our uh, Board of Selectmen meeting uh, two weeks yeah. ago, yep. and we discussed this with them. And one of the things that they said, well, this is going to conference committee and whatever, but I, I don't think that is strong enough. I think that if a local town or local residents or the local elected board says, we do not want this project, then that there should be protection for that. So I'll just end it there. I know you okay. have. Great, thank you for being very clear on your position. So the third question we had was that the uh, state, as you know, is committed to level fund 2021 at 2020 levels. Uh, this was positive news uh, so that we could kind of actually have a, a target uh, in terms of uh, our, our rates and reimbur our reimbursement receipts. Um, However, as you know, and this is sort of an update to this question, you know, our expenses incurred as a result of the pandemic, as well as lost revenue receipts, will continue to place Westboro in a difficult position. We are uniquely positioned in Westboro, as we're reported by our town manager, to be in a very good shape right now. But we don't know how long this is going to last, and we don't know the long-term perspective. So the question is, you know, every municipality is going to be reaching for the same dollar. You're going to be representing potentially three um, uh, municipalities. What is your approach to advocate for Westboro and all your municipalities um, so that they receive their fair share? So actually, that's a great question, but I actually want to um, reframe it, if you don't mind. It's the question that, you know, that this is a question that I get asked all the time, right? And the question, and if you don't mind, I'm just gonna play with you just for a minute. So just bear my humor just for a minute, okay? It's the question I'm essentially is being, that we're being asked is, how will you get a bigger piece? How will you get me my, my crumb of the pie? Sure. Whereas what I want to argue is, how can we make the pie bigger? So you don't, instead of fighting over the crumbs, you get a bigger slice, okay? And one of the things that I think that uh, residents or voters need to understand is that you pay federal tax federal taxes, you pay state taxes, and you pay property taxes, which fund basically our local government, okay? Because you pay state taxes, you know, the state government kicks back some of the money to local towns, okay? So essentially, it is essentially mom and dad saying, hey, Westboro or Northboro or Marlboro, you know, we'll give you some money to help run your house. Now, one of the things that it's critical to understand is that, and just, uh, just bear with me for a minute, just for the sake of explanation, that before in 2007, let's say, mom and dad said, Westboro will give you a thousand dollars, okay, to help run, uh, run your town, okay? Then the great recession happened. And mom and dad said, listen, we don't have the money. You're gonna have to make do with $800, okay? Mm -hmm. And after the great recession, that is, has essentially going up or down has been essentially what the towns like Westboro, Marlboro and Northboro have gotten. And if you look at the data from the Mass Municipal Association, which reminder is a nonpartisan association of people like myself, town managers, and other elected officials, if you look at the data, towns have not, state funding of towns has dropped from 28 to 19%. And it, that translates into, that's almost $200, below, $200 million below 2008 levels without even adjusting for, for inflation. Now, one of the arguments that you will, so to me, you need to expand the pie, okay? You need, you need to go back. Now, one of the arguments that you will hear, and this is kind of a timely discussion on this, is that, you know, well, where are you gonna get the money? The state is five to six billion, you know, looking in, in, at a deficit. But here's my, my, and my response to that is that and it, this is on my website, I hope you'll go to my prior, it's on my priorities list, is that when you, so that's essentially, if you'll forgive me, that is a pet, the patient being told you're anemic and you know what, you're gonna need, we're gonna have to figure out what to do. But the thing is, when you're anemic, you need to look to see where you're losing blood. Well, we're losing, and, the, and, the, and if you follow that analogy, we're losing blood because we give tax break to big corporations. We're losing money through giving, for instance, single, if we got rid of the single uh, factor um, thing for a tax break for municipal, uh, for mutual funds, we could get 180 
um, uh, almost $180 million right there. If we increase the corporate tax rate to 2010 levels, that's another three to $500 million that we could get. Now three to $500 million is, is serious money that could be used to fund our town. So I think there are mechanisms that we can do to expand, um, to expand the pie. And these mechanisms are critical. And, and Shelby, you, you hit it correctly. That we, it's not this to me, I, you know, it's not this year that worries me, okay? It is next year. Because the problem, the problem is, the un, one of the things that truly frightens me about this pandemic is that we do not know when this will end and we do not know when uh, things will get better, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the things that, uh, again, that truly frightens me is in the last recession, for want of a better word, uh, healthcare was protected. Uh, but the seriousness of this pandemic has shown uh, just recently, I know Shelby reads the business journals, uh, 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 Beth Israel laid off 175 workers. Mm -hmm. Almost every major hospital system in this state has laid off workers. Major stores have closed. So things are not going to get better. So we need to prepare. We cannot, again, I'm sorry, I guess it's the physician in me. If you are bleeding, you need to stop the bleeding. And cutting these tax breaks is an easy way to stop the bleeding and help the patient. And you can transfuse them later. Sure. Now, right now I'm, I, I, haven't, I haven't said anything because basically it's a local race. So my job is just to be the timekeeper. So I am mentioning, <laughs> Shelby, typically at the yep. end of our shows, we save a couple of minutes for you so you can be talking about what's coming up. And we have about three minutes left. Now I know there was a fourth question yep. that, we had, that we were asking. So the question is, how do you want to handle yeah, those three we're minutes? Gonna, we're gonna give that closing time to Syed. Um, and right. uh, Syed, so in the three minutes we have left, uh, we'll kind of wrap up with the fourth question, which was the one you uh, had asked us to ask, which is, what differentiates you from your um, uh, competition? You know, it, it's, um, thank you again for your time and patience. I was actually, I was standing outside Westboro High School trying to get signatures to run for state rep and a lady came up to me and she said, you know, I'm sick and tired of this. What makes you different? And I got to tell you, I went home and I thought I couldn't sleep and I was trying to figure out what makes me different. And the, the answer is nothing. There's absolutely nothing special about me. What makes this campaign different is that it is it is driven by your struggle your stories we are we are running on your courage your hopes and your trust you the voters represent all the reasons why i'm running and all the reasons why i'm so passionate about the issues that that matter to you you know i think what people frequently forget the privilege of elected office is is not the title the privilege of the of elected office is the chance to say i represent you and I pledge to the voters of this district that I will be your voice, I will stand with you, I will fight with you, and I will tirelessly, I will work tirelessly to build a better world for, for all of us. If you vote for me, it won't be me that is, is elected, it'll be you that, that is elected. And we can only achieve change when we, we are the change. And this is ultimately, and this is your campaign about our future. And you know, I have plenty of faults, uh, trust me. I have tr many of them, but one thing I think people know about me that I, I know I represent your hopes and I know I represent your dreams. And it, it is a great privilege to have so many of you in my life. And as always in this time of pandemic, I pray for your health and your safety. I hope you will take uh, this leap of faith. I hope you'll consider getting involved, spreading the word. We need all the help we can get. Uh, we need to hold on to each other to build a better tomorrow today. And so join me in Healing Massachusetts together. Thank you for your time. Well, um, Syed, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you. Busy, busy schedule. We'll make sure that we get your uh, website up on the um, ticker tape, so to speak, here at Westport TV. So they'll help us with that. And so thank you to Adian for yep. getting this done. He's, he's our technological wizard, Arthur. Always he's a pleasure. So, he's so good. And I have no, I, no, I just wanted to say thank you. I really, I really appreciate your coming on. Uh, and Shelby, I appreciate your organizing this. This was Shelby's idea to use this show. We're, we're, we're so often covering individual issues to also talk to, to candidates. I think this is a really, really important addition 
to the show. So thank you very much, um, Syed. Thank you very much, Shelby. Yeah. And folks, we'll see you. Look, we'll look forward to seeing you next week on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westbrook. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye.